much in your room. What was that? It's recording. You're recording. It's okay. Okay. So I've never used it before. Um, I didn't actually pick it up until I'd taken my medication this morning, just in case I swallowed the wrong tablet, but that's uh, supposed to be a joke anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry. But I'm just so unsophisticated that you don't expect anything else, do you? Um, okay. I've got my tablet, but I've got some notes here, so I'm going to read the notes instead. Um, oh, that's nice. It's musical. So, I'm staying with Bruce and Janet, and this morning I, I, I said, I, th I, I thought we'd start at 10 anyway, but I said I was going to walk to the meeting, and I was going to leave the house at 9 o'clock, so I'd get here nice and early. Um, and when I left the house, I started to say to the Lord, Lord, who do you want me to talk to? Okay, so I'm walking down the road, and there's a, a guy picking leaves by the side of the road. Oh, on the side of the path, not the road, a bit away from the traffic. And so I, I said to him, oh, what are you doing? What are you picking? And he said, um, I'm picking uh, dandelion leaves. I said, oh, I said, do you do eat them? He said, no, they're for my budgerigars, <laughs> oh, which is a bit, I thought they'd be for rabbits. So, but anyway, so I sort of said hello to him and, and uh, we wished each other a nice day and on he went. The next person I met was walking a dog. So I stopped and said hello to the dog and, uh, <laughs> and then said hello to the dog owner and we had a little chat and on she went, on I went. And then I met uh, two ladies with five dogs and so I said hello and the lady said hello. I said, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> and, uh, so then I did talk to her, I said, woof, woof. <laughs> she thought I was a bit strange, but anyway. So, so then I, but, do you know, I was walking at Armina and I saw the sign saying King's Church. And something inside of me said, just go in. So I walked into the car park and there was this young man coming out of the building to go to his car. So he saw me and he came up and he said, oh, hi, is this your first time? <laughs> That's, it's a bit like going to the dentist, isn't it? Is this your first time here? Anyway, sorry about that. Um, and I said, well, actually, I've not come to the meeting. I, I said, I saw the sign and I thought, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer and they're believers. They're my family. I just might come and say hello. So we started to talk. This young man wants to be a missionary in a French-speaking country and has begun to learn French and wants to go and spend time in France. And so I'm there with him talking about the work of the Lord in France because God made an appointment for us and he's going to come and see me in France. And I think there's more to it than that, actually. I believe there's more to it than that. I think when God makes appointments, he makes them good. And I just thought, Lord, I was blown away. Uh -uh. I was just blown away. God is so good. Yesterday I went to a conference. Um, and in the tea break, I was stood leaning against the wall. Um, I, I could have stood up without, but... Um, and anyway, this lady who stood next to me, we started to talk. And out of all the, what, 150, 200 pe people there, she's an ex-missionary to France. And we just had just the most wonderful connection. I just think, God makes appointments. He's so good at this. Um, but you know, God is just good at life. Ever so good at life. Um, and if we, if we can just allow him to flow through us, we will be good at it too. And if we don't allow him to flow through us, then, it's, it, then life's hard. It is, actually. Without Jesus, people find life very hard. 
But if you just let him flow through you, life is easy. It's just, uh, the, 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 we're talking about uh, falling off a log the other day, weren't we? Um, life is just as easy as falling off a log when you're walking with Jesus. It just, you know, you, your mistakes, he just turns them to good. All things work together for good to those that love God, who are called according to his purpose. It just happens. And it happens, I, I, I confess to you, I am just blown away with the faithfulness of God in, in little things and in big things. Um, I want to read a scripture, if I can get this thing to work a minute. Um, has anyone got a real Bible? I, 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 I've lost confidence. Can I borrow a Bible? Um, real Bible will, will do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is it an English one? Well, it's irrelevant. I want to read in John chapter 6. Yeah. And uh, verse 4. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Jesus, therefore, lifting up his eyes, seeing that a great multitude was come to him, said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread that these may eat? And this he was saying to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread. Now, the 200 denarii worth of bread is the equivalent in those days to uh, 200 days wages for the average workman or soldier. Okay, just put it in context. Uh, is 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them for everyone to receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, answered, said to him, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are they for these so many, for so many people? What are these for so many people? I want to read it again in Mark chapter 6. Can we do that? I'm sorry, you can't read your Bible because I've got it, but I'll read it to you, okay? Um, and verse uh, 30, 35, okay? Just, it's a bit different here. Um, his disciples came up to him, began saying, the place is desolate and it's already quite late. Send them away so that they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. And then they said to him, well, effectively the same, 200 denarii worth of bread. She wants to buy that so that everyone can have a little bit. The thing I want to say to you is this, um, I suppose it's down in front of that, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, okay. The thing I want to say is this, God said to, Jesus, that is God, said to the disciples, you give them to eat. And he's still saying it to his disciples. You give them to eat. Um, and I could, I, I mean, I could turn the, uh, this, I suppose it's already on me, the, the camera on me and say, Bill Cheney, when was the last time you gave somebody Jesus to eat? Because Jesus goes on in John chapter 6 to say, uh, the, the bread of God is the one that came down from heaven and gave life, and gives life to men. And Jesus said, you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood and then you'll have life in you. And so if Jesus is saying to me today and to you today, uh, feed my sheep or give them something to eat, it's Jesus. When was the last time you gave somebody Jesus to eat? It's a funny way of putting it, isn't it? <laughs> but when was it? Because do you know something? Everybody that you meet is hungry. Everyone that you meet, they're hungry. 
and they are wanting somebody to say to them, I've got something for you. Of course, they don't all know it. And they're not all ready for it. Some of them are just happy to pick dandelions or, or walk their dogs. But if you are willing to be somebody who feeds people with the life of Jesus, and you say to him, because I do this when, I, when I'm going out, Lord, give me somebody today. Give me somebody on this walk. And, uh, I mean, today, it, it, I was a bit disappointed because it, he was already a Christian. But, but, <laughs> but, you know, God can do. If he can make cars start, and he can save people that are dying of cancer, he can lead you to somebody who's hungry for Jesus. Whoever you are. Whoever you are. Actually, these five loaves and two small fishes were a little boy's lunch, apparently, or something like that. So, it wasn't sort of rocket science. It was just a pack of lunch. If you have received Jesus in your heart and in your life, you have enough to share him with others. Already, You don't need to grow anymore. You don't need, of course you need to grow in the Lord. You don't need to read your Bible anymore. Of course you need to read your Bible. You don't need to pray anymore. Of course you need to pray. But to share Jesus, you've got enough. You've got enough. But are you willing to do it? That's the question. Am I willing to take the risk? Uh, being a Christian is the safest thing in the world. But it's the life with the greatest risks as well. I, I, mean, I take risks all the time. But I'm the safest person on the planet if I'm in the will of God. You take risks all the time. But you are the safest person on the planet if you're in the will of God. Even if you fall over and nearly break your back. Do you know... The Lord says quite clearly that all things work together for good to them that love God. So I'm expecting something good to come out of this. Yeah. I've been in hospitals a lot. I think I've told you about some of my stories in hospital, but I'm going to tell you another one because I, I, I go into hospital, well, I, I haven't been in hospital for a few years now, I think about three years, but I like going into hospital, same as I like going to the dentist, but that's another point. Um, because every time I've been in hospital, the Lord's, uh, they, in, in France, you've got two beds in a room. So you know what happens, don't you? <laughs> the other person, the poor, poor guy, I mean, it's always a guy anyway, but um, they, they, they haven't got a chance, really. Because I love them, and Jesus loves them. So we're in the majority in the room. So I just share the love of Jesus with people. And I tell you, people want to receive the love of Jesus. One time I was in the hospital and I, I was really disappointed because I didn't actually have anybody to share with. And I was sitting in the waiting room, waiting for the ambulance to come to take me home. And there was a young lady sat next to me. And so I just said to her, why are you here? And she said, because I did something stupid. She tried to commit suicide. She gave her heart to Jesus. Wow. You will never, ever go out into this world without meeting people that are hungry for Jesus. You will meet lots of people who don't know it. And the, if I may say, the art of soul winning is to love people without expectation. Just love them. Just love them and take the risk of even just talking to them. You know, pat their dog. I mean, that's a risk for a start. Um, <laughs> you might get bitten, might you? Um, but just take the risk of engaging with people without any expectation and you will be surprised what God will do. Are you willing to do that? I'm not... Well, you know I'm not a good preacher. Um, I don't... I, mean, I don't even want to be a good preacher. I want to share 
what's on my heart from God. And that doesn't necessarily need good preaching. It just needs people who are willing to hear what I've got to say. We're willing to hear what God has got to say. And actually, I feel that God is actually saying to you, dear brothers and sisters, that there's a whole world there that's waiting for what you've got. How long must they wait before we share his love with them? Come on. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be nostalgic. And sorry if you don't, you can always say, don't, don't speak here again. That's okay. But <laughs> years ago, years ago, we used to have meetings in uh, Car House, and then we used to have some little me midweek meetings in our house in Wheeler's Lane, but we used to have mostly in Car House and then in the Red Cross Hall. And do you know something? People used to come to the meetings because they were, f they were finding Jesus there. And they used to, it was exciting. Because we didn't know how to do it, really. We'd never done it before. And so it was all kind of exciting. We really did things which, which we wouldn't do now. We sung songs, didn't we, Julie, that we wouldn't sing now. And we, uh, we did. We did. And people got touched. And people would come because there was something there. We took the risk of sharing the love of Jesus with people. A church that doesn't take risks is a church that's on de in decline. Brothers and sisters, I'm being honest with you. A church that doesn't take risks. Uh, well, do you mean to say that Jesus takes risks? Yes, he took the risk of the cross. Yes? He took the risk of going to the cross. That's what saved us. Wow. I want to live for Jesus. I want to share his love. Uh, when, I, I, when I walk down the street and I see people, I, something inside of me just aches to share his love. You know, sometimes we can forget that Jesus died to save the whole world. And we can get focused upon our lives. There's a lovely song that this uh, Chinese order it was lady um, shared in this meeting that I was in yesterday. Oh, it was you that I was in it with, sorry. I was looking at Bruce and he doesn't know what I'm looking at him for. Um, there's a river of life flowing out through me, makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors, sets the captives free. There's a river of life flowing out through me. Spring up, O oh well, within my soul. Spring up, O oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, O oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. Now, I love that song. You probably know it quite well, do you? Yeah? Okay, we might sing it in a minute then. Um, but, is there a river of life flowing out through me, through you? Or are we singing a theoretical thing? I, you know, I, I know I could sound like a real condemning guy, or, you know, one of these preachers that makes you feel awful. I have no intention of doing that, brothers and sisters. What's that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have no intention of making you feel bad, making you feel guilty. Well, I, my intention is to, to get you excited about a possibility that someday soon you are going to see somebody saved because you took a risk. Someday soon you're going to share the love of Jesus with somebody because you took a risk. I want you to get... Well, I, I will tell you something. There's a church in Revelation. You can know where I'm going now, Revelation. Um, we just... Just read it for a minute. Okay. 
and chapter chapter 2 verse 4 you know it's the church of the Ephesians I love the book of Ephesians don't you I think it's wonderful so much spiritual blessing in it and yet Jesus has to say to this church I've, verse 4 I have this against you that you have left your first love remember from where you've fallen and repent and do the deeds that you did at first the first works do you know what the first works are? I can remember just falling in love with Jesus. We used to sing a song, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. When was the last time you felt bowled over with the love of Jesus? When was it that you just, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> we all must get back into the place where we're in first love because if we don't, you know, the world is robbed. And if the world is robbed, then in the end Jesus is robbed because it's, it's him that came into the world to save sinners. So we must get back into first love. Can you hear what what's banging in my heart here. Jesus, uh, uh, well, uh, I'll say Jesus loves you. He loves you. Do you believe it? Amen. Hands up those that do. Please, just let me see that you're not asleep. All right, okay. Would you do me a favour? Turn to the person next to you or in front of you or behind you and just say to them, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. <laughs> Amen. See, so you said that you believe that Jesus loves you, and somebody else has just told you that Jesus. That makes two people that believe that Jesus loves you. That's that's pretty good, isn't it? Jesus believes that he loves you. That's three. Okay. Amen. Amen. Do you love him as much? Do you remember Peter when? After Jesus had risen from the dead and he was on the beach and he got fire and he got fish and all that stuff and he said to, to Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? And the word that Jesus used, and I think you've, you know this, was the word for agape, the word for the kind of love that God loves us with. And Peter said to him, Lord, you know I love But Peter couldn't use the same word that Jesus used. He had to use a word which really meant, I love you like a friend, like a brother, but not like God loves me. Filio. So Jesus said it again, Simon Peter, do you love me? And Simon again had to say the same to Jesus. So in the end, Jesus said to him, Simon Peter, do you love me like a friend, like a brother, with filial love? And Simon Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know that's how I love you. The Holy Spirit had not come into Peter's life. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, what he does, he sheds the love of God abroad in your heart by his Holy Spirit, which he gives you. And you love him. And that's supposed to be the permanent condition of every saint and if you are saved by Jesus Christ you are called saints I call you saints because God calls you saints okay so that's supposed to be your permanent position the love of God shed upon your heart so you love him and his love is in you and it's, that's what makes you tick that's what motivates you and if that's what motivates you, you can't possibly tell me 
that you go out into the world and you don't see that there are people hungry and thirsty for some truth, desperate to be loved, desperate to hear that they can be forgiven. You know, people all the time, I meet people who, who need to know that the things that were said over their lives, God can deal with it. They've had negative said, do you know, I, uh, let me just talk about this younger generation. You'll be very, very lucky, uh, outside of church as this is, if you meet a young person who's not watched really violent horror and pornography. You'll be lucky if you meet somebody, a young person who hasn't watched that. They need the love of Jesus. They need to know that that, that can be washed out of them. I talked to a, a young woman just recently, and. She's a lovely young woman, but the images that she's seen couldn't get out of her mind. It's not just the guys, it's, it's, it's guys and girls, they're seeing this stuff, they can't help it. They're not to be blamed for it now. It's, it's the state of the world, and God can set people free and cleanse them from that. But how ever are they going to know it unless we tell them? I uh, just, I'm aching inside. <laughs> wow. I've got a neighbour, I'm just telling you about my neighbour. Um, her husband is actually a bit of a racist. Not, not particularly a pleasant person. But she actually... The other day she, she walked past them and I can't remember how the conversation began, but we ended up considering the fact that even if you had told one lie, you were no longer perfect. And so in God's sight, you were a sinner. And she had to admit that she told more than one lie. I didn't ask her to admit it, she just did. And I said to her, um, you know, if, if we steal, we are thieves, even if it's only once. And she said, I've never stolen anything. And I said to her, do you know, not declaring things on the tax form is stealing. And she was silent. I'd hit the nail on the head. We're all guilty before God. So I said to her, that's why Jesus died on the cross. Because he can forgive every sin. That was as far as we got. But my neighbour, it's begun. It will continue. She only lives across the road from me, so she hasn't got a chance really. Um, and her dear husband, um, God loves him too. God loves him too. You've got neighbours. Neighbour that's next door to them suffered really seriously in her life. And so far I've asked the ladies of the church, one or two of them to come, and together we've prayed for her twice so far. God's in the beginnings of a work with that neighbour. The next door to me there's another couple and I've begun to share the love of God with them. I don't say that we're going to get, you know, big results, but I want to tell you that if people know that you love them, when the chips are down, they'll come to you. And it doesn't matter if it takes 10 years or 50 years. When the chips are down, the people that, that, that have met somebody who loves them in Jesus' name, they know where to go. They do. And if you're not around they'll go to somebody else. But listen, we have to be lovers. Is that all right? Do you mind if I talk? I mean, I'm talking like this because I have a heart for this church. I want to see this, this church filled with people finding Jesus 
Do you? I want to see this church excited because somebody's got saved. Somebody's got healed. Somebody's got delivered. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's happening in France, uh, just for a moment, because we've been in this church uh, nine years. And, okay, to begin with, there was a lot of clicks. Do you know what a click is? It's not that. I can't do it now. Um, it's people that just talk to, to their own little group. And they're very... And so you could get there and you could feel almost um, a spare part. And that was what going to church was like there to begin with. But the love of God has kind of just seeped in and somehow or another people have got to love one another. And last Sunday, um, <laughs> it was the first time this has ever happened in that church, um, one of the brothers said, I think we should all get up and give one another a hug. And everyone was getting up and they were going to people and giving them a hug and telling them, I love you, brother. And sisters were saying, I love you, sister. And, and, and the love of God was, was being manifested. That's a, that's a real great thing. Now, I want to just say to you, you've got that already. You've got that already. Uh, that's wonderful. But do they know it? We had a guy came in. We had, we, once a month we have lunch. And this guy came in because his wife invited him. She's not really saved yet, but she's on the way. And he came in. And you know what we do in France, don't you? Come here, Alan. Please. <laughs> You're French, man. Okay. <laughs> what about that? Eh? So, this guy, never been in a church before, comes because he's invited for dinner, and everybody that meets him gives him the kiss. You know, greet one another with a holy kiss, it says in the scripture. It's perfectly acceptable. Uh, but in France, it's the equivalent of shaking hands almost. And this guy turns to his wife and says, none of them know me, and they're all giving me bees. That's what it's called, bees, okay? He was just blown away, because everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. I don't see that happen in this church, people coming in and finding that everybody loves them. Wow. Is God able to, to turn, not the clock back, but turn it around so that what was so wonderful at the beginning of the fellowship, when we were all so excited about Jesus and didn't know anything other than to, to just love one another and hug one another and, and share the love of Jesus and go out and share it with the kids in the street or the kids in the school or the neighbours. I think I told you last time about my neighbour in Wheelers Lane who, who, who came to church because she said that guy smiled at me every day. You can do it. You can do it. God's love is big. I want to see this church vibrant with that kind of wow, what will Jesus do next? Can you believe God for it again? That's not been a very good sermon, is it? <laughs> I, I, I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't want to preach. I want, to, I want you to speak to people. I hope he's speaking to you. Because it's costing me a lot in my heart to share like this. If we don't allow the Lord to flow through us like this, I, I just... Uh, let me talk. Uh, yeah, let me talk to you about the church just for a minute, because everything that Jesus did on earth, he did by listening to what his father was saying and seeing what his father was doing and doing the same. So, in fact, everything that Jesus did, he was led by the Spirit to do. 
I think you'd agree with that. Didn't have, you don't have a problem with that, do you? No, okay. So Jesus was led by the Spirit. What is the church? Can you tell me? It's the body of Christ. So is the body of Christ going to do it differently than the head? Not really. I mean, when was the last time your head went shopping? The last time your body carried it, okay? Your body and your head always go in the same direction. Your thoughts may not, but your physical, <laughs> okay? So if this is the body of Christ, then everything in the church should be in the spirit. Am I right or not? Do you, we're agreeing with this, aren't we? Um, in fact, the church is either a church in the spirit or it's not really the church. The body of Christ is filled with the spirit of God. Got to be. It's filled with the spirit of Christ because otherwise it's dead. Uh, is it 2 Corinthians 3? I'm not quite sure, but we'll have a look and see. It is. 2 Corinthians 3, I think. I, w I, wish I, I wish I could just give a nice sermon and, and preach a nice message because that was what I intended to do. <laughs> mm. Gosh. Verse 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Oh no, I'm going to read the whole bit. Are we begin beginning to commend ourselves again or do we need, as some others, letters of commendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written in our hearts, known and read by all men, being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone, but on the tables of human hearts. So what did I just read there? God in Christ has written in us a letter by the Spirit. Wow. Every single one of us, God, if we are, if we are Christ's, God has written in us by his Spirit. This is amazing, isn't it? I actually think it is really wonderful. And such confidence have we through Christ towards God. When you know that God has written by his spirit in you, you've got confidence before God. Because actually, you're his child. Does your child come to you in fear and trembling and, oh no, I've got to talk to dad. No, they come to you, daddy. Wasn't that Amelia that gave you a hug on the stairs? Beautiful. Wow. God wants us to give him a hug on the stairs. <laughs> it's daddy, it's father. Mm -hmm. So we have confidence in God. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy, our sufficiency, our all in all is of God, who has made us adequate servants of the new covenant. I don't know what translation this, but I rather like that. You're, in, you're, you're enough. You are enough to be a servant, to bring the life of Jesus to men and women. You're enough. You as a fellowship are enough. But we haven't got this, we haven't got that rubbish. You've got Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's all you need. Well, you might need some other things as well on the practical levels, but actually, essentially, all you need is the Spirit of Jesus and the rest he can do anyway. Okay. So, made us servants of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And what I want to say about that, if I may, if you'll permit me to say this, is that 
I think he's talking about ministry in the spirit here. I think he's talking about when we impart the word to one another and to the people that we meet. So uh, I don't make a division in my thinking between being in church and being out on the street. You can probably tell that, I mean, I don't behave like I'm in church when I'm in church and I don't behave like I'm on the, out on the street when I'm out on the street. As a, I'm just being me. But the ministry of the Spirit will always be give life. The ministry of the Spirit will always give life. And the church is supposed to be 100% filled with the Spirit and moving in life. That's the church. That's Jesus Christ. Do you ever read in the scripture where Jesus was going around and uh, he had an off day, he wasn't filled with the Spirit? No. Never happened. Do you ever read in the Scripture where the church of Jesus Christ had off days and was not filled with the Spirit? Yes, when they'd lost their first love. When they'd lost their first love. And if you want to stay filled with the Spirit, there's only one way to do it, and that is to love Jesus. Okay? It's as simple as that, my brothers and sisters. We need to get back to loving Jesus desperately. Um, we can, we're all different. And I am so glad that there's nobody else like me. <laughs> and, and most people that I know would say amen to that. <laughs> I'm so glad that, not, that I'm nobody, there's nobody else like me. But I'll tell you something, there's nobody else like me either. There is no one else quite like you. Um, so that's why we're all unique. And God takes unique people who are adequate because he's in them and uses them to touch lives. Are you willing to take the risk of saying to Jesus, this morning even, okay, Lord, I know I haven't been very good at this, but I'm going to give it my all. Fill me and flow through me. Simple as that, really. And then be willing to change. Uh, what am I saying? We've got to change. We've got to be different. Well, I want to tell you that somebody who is filled with the Spirit of Jesus and flowing with his love, they are like that song. There is a river of life flowing out through that person. And they may not see the lame healed every day. They will see sometimes healing, because Jesus says so. They may not see the blind made to see every day, but they might see some sometimes. They may not see prison doors open and captives set free every day, but I, I'm seeing more of that, I must confess. As, as I share the love of Jesus with people, I'm seeing people set free, and that is just so wonderful. But if, when we sing that song, we get to the second verse, uh, second part, and it says, Spring up, O well, within my soul. Spring up, O well, and make me whole. And we only stop there, brothers and sisters. We have totally missed the point. Spring up, O well, and make me whole. No, spring up, O well, and make them whole. That's where I want to be. I'm already made whole. Jesus has saved me. Jesus has washed me in his blood. Jesus has made me right with himself, made me able to stand in the presence of Almighty God without any condemnation. But then, they don't know it. Spring up, O oh well, and make them whole. Spring up, O oh well, and give to them 
that life abundantly. That's, that's what I would rather sing, because that's already happened in me. Has it happened in you? Do you have that abundant life? Do you have the well inside you? Then will you just change your thinking? And instead of thinking, spring up, O oh well, and make me whole, thank you, Jesus, you've made me whole. Spring up, O oh well, and touch their lives through me. That's what the church is supposed to be like. And if we can just get that in our spirit, get that in our heart, we will see some wonderful changes take place. And I want to prophesy to you, if you'll allow me to do that, that if you will take the risks that you've never taken before, God will do the things that you've never seen him do before. I promise you. Just read your Bible. I'm going to stop talking. Well, actually, time's stopped. Anyway. And time's ended. I'll, I'll try using my iPad next time. I didn't have the confidence to do it this time. Um, we're going to pray together. Yes. Can you stand up? Um, Andy and Sue, could you just come right up here too? I want us to all hold hands. All because we're all in this together or we're not in it at all. Is that okay? Can we do it? Is that okay? Come on. Don't, don't be on your own. Nobody on their own. Nobody on their own, please. We've got to be together. Because we're the, are, are we the body of Christ? Yes, we are, aren't we? Is there anybody who's not part of the body of Christ? Okay, let's pray together now. I might use the words, but you pray in your heart. Amen. Amen. And if you want to pray these words, oh, God, God bless you, so that's great. Hallelujah. Father, it's just so wonderful to know that we are loved unconditionally. And Lord, that you think that we are worth sending Jesus to die on the cross for. We just can't understand that level of love, but we thank you that you love us with it. And we thank you that you have saved us and that you've washed us and that you've made us to be your sons and daughters and that we belong to you and that you're our daddy, you're our God, you're our heavenly father. We thank you. Lord, and we want to speak positively. Lord, we want to say, Lord, we believe your word. And Lord, we're willing to receive what you say to us and to do what you tell us to do. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, give us the, the boldness to take the risk of living for Jesus in this day, in this age, Father. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have woken us up from sleep. Oh. Lord Jesus, it's so easy to sleep oh. and just to drift, Lord. Mm. And that is mm. not your purpose in our lives, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Your purpose Jesus. in our lives is, is for your Holy Spirit oh. to be active yeah. in us and through us, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. For other people, Lord, and for the glory of your holy name. Yeah. Yeah. And we thank you for the words mm. we've heard this morning. We thank you that the Holy Spirit has been speaking yeah. to us. Mm. And we just pray, Lord Jesus, that you will work your work through us. Mm. Wake us up out of sleep, Lord Jesus Lord Christ. Jesus. Wake us up. Hallelujah. Wake us, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to do one more thing, if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, I want us to pray together. So, so to help that, I'm going to just say something. I just want you to say it after me. I'm not trying to manipulate you or anything like that, but I just know that actually God has somehow given us voices to, to speak truth. Yeah. And what you say, God will believe. Okay? Uh, when God speaks and you believe it, things happen. So when you speak and God believes it, things will happen. If you're speaking from your heart. So would you pray after me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me and that you have filled me with your love. I ask you to fill me again and I ask you to use me to 
touch other lives and make me a true vessel to carry your love into this world and make your church to be all glorious and full of love. Amen.